Hello everyone, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Xbox Series X. Yes, I managed to get a hold of one at retail price. And that's three times now in one lifetime we've managed to get lucky uh, with the PS5, the Series X, and an RTX 3080 Ti. Uh, so yeah, I managed to pick it up at retail. I decided just to get it because it was available. Bought it off of very.co.uk. And I get to uh, pay it up. So again, um, the Xbox Series X is kind of a, just a greatest hits console, really. Um, there's not a lot of new next-gen features. So the footage you are looking at is Borderlands 3, uh, which again, it has a free upgrade uh, for the Xbox Series X. It runs in two modes. This is the 4K mode. Uh, so it has resolution and performance mode. Resolution uh, is the 4K mode. So you get 4K and 60 FPS. Uh, performance mode gets you 1080p and 120 FPS. Now I can't record any high refresh rate uh, footage because I don't have a capture card that will do uh, 120 hertz capture, 120 FPS uh, capture, or uh, and YouTube doesn't support the 120 fps uh, playback anyway it only supports 60 fps so we are stuck uh with the 4k mode so all the footage that you see for all of the games here will be either the 4k mode or the performance mode it'll only have a max of 60 fps although i did manage to try the 120 fps mode because uh, i do have a uh, 1440p uh, monitor which is 144 hertz monitor and it will support 120 hertz uh, output on the xbox one x and the good thing about the xbox one x over the ps5 i should point out that borderlands 3 does have the same two modes on the PS5. Uh, so we'll do comparisons between the... We'll compare it to the PS5, but again, it is fairly similar um, to, to the same experience on the PS5. The 120 hertz mode does run pretty well uh, in some games. The advantage, though, that the Series X has is that it will support 1440p as a resolution. You can select that in the menu. Uh, which is nice. Again, the game only runs at 1080p. It will sort of super sample up to 1440p in the 120 hertz mode. Uh, but that is nice to have that. And it's nice to have everything running at 1440p instead of the PS5, which only has 720p, 1080p, and 4K. It's nice to have that 1440p support. It also supports variable refresh rate, which we can enable. Uh, so we can turn, uh, I have a free sync monitor. And it does recognize that, and you can turn it on in the menu. Can't do this on the capture card, though, because the capture card doesn't support the variable refresh rate or 120 hertz outputs. And again, so we can't really show you that in the game uh, there. So, yeah, um, it is uh, an interesting, uh, interesting uh, thing. Borderlands 3 runs fine. Uh, again, the 4K60 mode is fine. I did get a free upgrade. I didn't have to buy this. I just inserted my Borderlands 3 uh, disc and it gave me the update. It offered you. It does that with all the games, and that's one of the best things about the Series X is the transition is seamless. Like, it loads up all your saves. You can see I've got the DLC save uh, for the Handsome Jackpot DLC. So, I loaded in uh, Moe's here and uh, you know we can get to play this the resists are coming up because every fourth shot's a flame shot in case you're wondering um so they resist fire there that's why you're seeing resist a lot there uh but yeah so yeah this game runs really well it doesn't look any better than the xbox one version because there's no visual upgrade um it's just the frame rate uh, upgrade because resolution mode on the xbox one x gave you 4k at 30 fps and then the uh, performance mode, I think, just ran at a lower. It ran at 1080p, and it targeted 60 FPS, but could never quite make it. Whereas the 120 hertz mode is really good, and with VRR, any frame rate drops are really nice. So yeah, Borderlands 3, not not a graphical upgrade, uh, but just a performance upgrade. It is a native uh, Xbox Series X app, as is the PS5 version, a native PS5 app. So you do have to install it on the on the SSD. Again, the, the Xbox One X does, or the Xbox Series X, sorry, I'm going to get that mixed up. Uh, it does come with a, uh, with a one terabyte Gen 3 NVMe SSD. 
uh, there, so it's not quite as fast as the PS5's SSD, but it is fast enough to get the job done, really. Um, you shouldn't really have any real issues. The loading times are okay, and again, you have to run native apps from the internal drive or buy the the Xbox as a, like a, a proprietary external drive uh, from Seagate there. But let's move on uh, to something else and we'll take a look at another game here. Right, so Gears 5 then uh, has a lot of improvements over the uh, Xbox One X version. The Xbox One X, it targeted 4K. Uh, but would very rarely hit 4K, and it ran the PC equivalent settings. It was around medium to low settings. A lot of the things uh, were running on there. Uh, things like the uh, screen space uh, reflections, they are retained here, but they're running at a lot of higher settings. You also get, uh, again, the dynamic resolution scaler because it has more GPU headroom. Uh, can hit 4K more often. It's still dynamic, so it will dip below 4K, but... It does hit 4K more often, things like the shadows and the texture quality as well, that's the biggest bump that it takes. Uh, you do get the UHD texture pack, which was previously exclusive to PC, so you can see the characters' uh, outfits and the textures generally get a nice upgrade uh, on, on, the, on the Xbox One, or the Xbox Series X, should we say? Uh, the Series X over the One X there, and yeah, it still targets 60 FPS. And again, it, dynamic 4K, uh, so it's not going to do uh, 4K um, consistently. But it is, it is nice. The frame rate and the performance is nice. And the visual upgrade is really nice as well. Uh, I really like the, the visual upgrade there. You've got more sort of high and ultra settings as opposed to low and medium settings. But yeah, gameplay-wise, it's pretty, it's pretty much the same uh, as the, uh, you know, as as the xbox one version it is just a visual upgrade uh, again there huge file size on that ssd now it does take up um yeah it's like 150 gigabytes now that that uhd texture pack was huge it's huge on the pc as well it did take up a lot of space on the pc as uh, so we've chosen this kind of area because it's in the benchmark of the the xbox or the pc version uh, out here, so that's why we've chosen this kind of area. A bit of combat, a bit of running through the ice there, a bit of skiff gameplay there. But it runs very well, uh, Gears 5. Uh, again, it's mostly the equivalent of the, it now looks like the PC version now. Um, so it is a big upgrade. Again, no real upgrade to the, the gameplay, it's still the same game. If you didn't like Gears 5, uh, on the PC or the Xbox One X, you're not going to like it on this, so there's no real changes, but it is nice to get the upgrade, and again, it offers you a free upgrade uh, when you go to launch it, the smart delivery detects that you're running on an Xbox uh, One, an Xbox, a Series X, Jesus, Microsoft, you're running on a Series X as opposed to a One X, and it does offer you the chance to download an upgrade, the download is huge though as well, it is a big huge game uh, to download. But anyway, let's move on to something else. We'll look at some ray tracing in Doom Eternal now. All right, so Doom Eternal then, it does it does have an Xbox, again, Series X enhancement patch, and you do get three modes in Doom Eternal. Uh, you've got the mode that you're looking at right now, which is the RT mode, the ray tracing mode, uh, which will run at 60 FPS. It is using dynamic resolution scaling, uh, so it's not 4K. Uh, you can get the balanced mode, which is the 4K 60 FPS mode, which again does stick to 4K. It's still dynamic resolution scaling is on, so it will dip below 4K. Uh, the other mode you've got is the 120 Hz mode, where again, it uses dynamic resolution, but targets a frame rate of 120 Hz, uh, 120 FPS. That mode is pretty good. Doom Eternal uh, runs really well. It's a bit weird with a controller, though. That's the only thing I've got to say about Doom Eternal is... Still can't get used to running it with a controller. I mean, you're used to. I'm used to it on the PC with the uh, with the mouse and keyboard there. We did play this on XCloud. It is much better than the XCloud version, but yeah, Doom Eternal, um, not as good as the PC version with the ray tracing. Um, it is kind of lower resolution. The reflections uh, are generally lower res, uh, than the PC, um, but yeah, it looks pretty good as well, it still looks pretty nice, um, I would recommend the RT mode, um, if, again, 
you've got the series x you might as well take advantage of that rather than the resolution mode uh there but it is up to you if you've got the 120 hertz display then obviously the 120 hertz uh is probably going to be the best from a gameplay standpoint but yeah the 4k mode is pretty decent actually the 4k mode's all right looks all right but again i would go with the rt modes just get those enhanced ray traced reflections still weird playing with a controller though like that is one of the things that just gets you you can play with a mouse and keyboard though the xbox uh uh, one x the series x should we say does support mouse and keyboard there's options for it in the menu so if you really want to try it with mouse and keyboard you can uh you know you can try it there but i think a uh, bit difficult to get used to with a controller um uh, it's not as bad as the x cloud version where we couldn't make it across the jump this is the same save i should point out as we played on the x cloud and we couldn't get past this section uh on xcloud just because of the input lag but yeah it's a lot better you know it's a lot better because we're playing locally um you can kind of see some of the reflections you can see it mostly in the shotgun the reflections there um but yeah the ray tracing mode looks good it's not as detailed as the pc one because the ray traced reflections are running at a lower resolution than the game's running again it is dynamic uh resolution that it uses and uh, you know, it does stick to 60 FPS. You would rather it drops resolution than drops frames because it's just a lot better for the gameplay, I think, uh, to drop resolution. You don't notice it when you're getting, when you're sort of knee deep in demons, really. You're not really going to notice it dropping a few pixels. You're going to notice it dropping frames, though. That's the main thing, though. Uh, anyway, we will move on to something else with some more ray tracing. I don't have Control Ultimate Edition. That is a shame. Uh, that I don't have that. I would have liked to try it. I got, you got it on the PlayStation because it was free on PlayStation Plus. Uh, but I'm not buying it again just to try it out. And it is the same. It's just the same as the PlayStation 5 version. Uh, again, it is 1440p, 60fps without ray tracing. And low settings. Uh, the PC equivalent of low settings. And then it is uh, 1440p and 30fps with the ray tracing. Again, all settings are equalized. We could have put footage of the PlayStation 5 version, but there's no point. Uh, so Control, yeah, it does ha it is pretty much the same as the PS5 version there. There's no real difference. They were normalized. Same with Doom, I think. I think these are pretty much the same. I think the PS5 also has the same modes. Uh, again, it's got the ray tracing, the balanced, and the 60 FPS mode uh, as well, or the, the, the 120 FPS mode as well. Okay, so let's move on to Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. And this, again, very similar to Doom Eternal. Uh, it does have a ray tracing mode, and this is the ray tracing mode uh, that you are taking a look at. It just got ray traced reflections. So you can have enhanced graphics, which is the RT mode. You can have enhanced resolution, which is a 4K 60 FPS mode. Or you can have uh, enhanced uh, enhanced visual, enhanced frame rate as well, which I don't know if it runs at 120 FPS. It doesn't say, um, but I don't know if it does that as well. But yeah, so so these are games that we've looked at so far have been upgrades uh, that are native uh, PS5 games. Uh, so we're going to take a look at what we'll do is we'll take a look at something that hasn't isn't a native PS5 game. But the, what the Xbox Series consoles do is they have got what's called FPS Boost mode. Uh, so some games are supportive of FPS Boost. So what that means is the game that is that normally ran at 30 FPS, if they support FPS Boost, they will be enhanced to run at 60 FPS. This is a technique that Microsoft have used. I mean, Hellblade here is an actual port. Uh, of the the series x game here and it does look pretty good um, i'm not a big fan of this game to, to be honest with you um, i don't really like the combat i hate when you get more than one enemy on the screen and it only focuses on one of them but yeah not a big fan of hellblade senua's sacrifice so what we'll do now is we'll take a look at uh, xbox one game that's been enhanced uh, with FPS boost here. And again, some games have been boosted to 120. Some games have been boosted to 60. Now, we can't take a look at the 120 games. Like Battlefield 1, uh, I did try that, but I can't record it because, again, we don't have the means to record. 
uh, 120 hertz uh, footage we can only record at 60 so it's a bit pointless doing it but yeah it runs battlefield 1 runs pretty well i did try that battlefield 5 as well has also got that the downside to games that are 120 hertz with fps boost is it is only the xbox one s version and not the x version so it's like 900p to 1080p at 120 fps uh so if you're you know it's not that impressive really because most mid-range PCs could do that at that low resolution. But anyway, let's go check out Fallout 4 anyway, because that does have an enhanced uh, FPS. Right, so Fallout 4 then with FPS boost. Now Fallout 4 was a what it is was 900p and 30 FPS on the Xbox One when it first launched. This uh, does enhance the resolution. Uh, it doesn't enhance the resolution, sorry. It enhances the frame rate. And again, it just makes it a lot easier to play because you're getting a 60 FPS uh, rather than the 30 FPS. It does make running and gunning a lot better. We don't need to rely on the VATs as much. So it does make a big difference to the gameplay. I mean, it is quite uh, transformative, actually, uh, to the gameplay. It is a very different game at 60 FPS. We played this on the PC at 60 FPS, and it does feel really good. Again, the graphic settings aren't changed, so all you do is go into the menu and just change the... There is an option for FPS boost. Uh, if you don't have 120 hertz support, uh, it will not offer you FPS boost for the 120 hertz games like Battlefield 1, as we said. But Fallout uh, 4 was a 30 FPS game. It took me a while to find 30 FPS games. Thank God I had Game Pass really uh, there, so I could get the 30 FPS. Find a 30 FPS game to download. Uh, and then, uh, you know, get it upgraded to, to the 60 FPS, which is decent. It doesn't need to do any updates to the actual game, uh, which is nice because uh, it's just like a, a viewport hack that it's using uh, to update. A lot of older PC games use this in DirectX um, to get higher frame rates. But yeah, Fallout, um, decent game, actually. It still looks the same as it does because i don't think there was a xbox one x patch for this it doesn't look great kind of dated now fallout it just it's one of those games that just hasn't aged well uh when it came out it wasn't a classic when it came out and it to me it really does it's showing its age now visually and gameplay wise like fallout new vegas is still a classic i love that game and incidentally no no fps boost on fallout new vegas i'd love fps boost on fallout new vegas i think that would be awesome uh to get i'd prefer it over this to be honest with you because i tried fallout new vegas because i had that installed on my hard drive and again the fps boost was just blanked out so yeah no fps boost. i think fallout 76 has it and that's even worse than this if you thought this was bad 76 was worse uh, but anyway let's uh move on to something else now all right so this is jedi fallen order uh we're running again this has two modes uh this has a performance mode which again has a dynamic resolution but will target 60 fps uh, it also has a resolution mode which again just targets 4k and 30 fps uh so i prefer you prefer the 60 fps mode um is way better uh, to be honest, for a game like Jedi Fallen Order, it is an action game. It can be uh, pretty, you know, pretty difficult at times. Uh, so I would always go with the 60 FPS mode. And it looks really good in the 60 FPS mode. Again, we just went for the performance mode. We can't go any higher than 60 for this, uh, which makes sense. So this is an Xbox uh, Series S and X enhanced game. And it's one of the best things about the Xbox is the seamless upgrade. Now, the question I suppose we should answer is, is it better than the PS5? Well, that's kind of a, it's kind of a subjective question. It is different. They do offer very different things. I mean, like we said about the Xbox One X, it's a greatest hits console, really. It's like the best versions of the console games, uh, you know, from the last three generations of xbox uh, so this is the fourth xbox console uh fourth sort of generation of xbox console uh but yeah this is generally it's going to give you the best console version and for the price as well it's not too bad again if you want a new games with new experiences 
there's very few out there um, on the Xbox. There's games like The Medium, which we looked at on PC. Uh, there's also, there was Psychonauts 2 as well, which I did install and did play for a bit, but I haven't recorded any footage for. Uh, so it's not like the PlayStation 5, which kind of has that new next gen. If you crave that new next gen experience, then the PS5 is the console for you. But the PS5 is okay at back compat, but this is the Xbox One, the Xbox Series consoles. This is their sort of party piece, the... Uh, the backwards compatibility support that they do have is pretty good because again again most games xbox one games will run on it and again the enhancements and upgrades a lot of them are free it's not like ghost of tsushima where they charge you for essentially a resolution upgrade it is 25 pounds for a resolution upgrade being able to change the settings and they tried to pull with horizon forbidden west as well the uh you know, they tried to pull that off with the upgrade. Microsoft, most of the games I was offered a free upgrade. Again, Jedi Fallen Order uh, was there. It was on Game Pass. And again, I, you know, was just offered an upgrade. And when you go to, if you have the game installed, so you can plug in your, I plugged in my external Xbox One hard drive, which I had Xbox One X games on. And it had, it just allows you to update. It says, do you want a free upgrade? It then moves, the downloads it to your SSD. Uh, you can keep the original as well. You can keep the original um, Xbox One X version on the external hard drive. You can still run the game from the external hard drive. Games like Fallout 4, which just have FPS boost, they can still be run from the external hard drive. Obviously, you won't get the benefit of the fast loading times, but... It does save space and in terms of space on the drive it is a one terabyte drive and you do get a 802 gigabytes of space on the drive there uh, so you can you know bigger than the ps5 is you only get 669 uh, gigabytes uh, of usage there uh, on the drive so you get about 200 gigs has been took up by the os uh, you can also plug in again, you can plug in the, uh, similar to the PlayStation 5, you can plug in your uh, Xbox One external hard drive and it will just recognize all the games. Uh, again, it will detect, the smart delivery will detect when uh, a new version is available. Uh, so it will allow you to upgrade for your charge. Again, I put in the Borderlands 3 disc and again, it offered me a free upgrade. So I took it because uh, I had Borderlands 3 on disc. And it's, it's nice that the smart delivery detects that um, for you. That's pretty good there. Uh, that was pretty nice. Uh, but other than that, again, if you want new generation experience, the PS5 probably is, you know, the better thing. You've got games like, I know Demon Souls was a remake, um, but it is a really good looking game. Demon Souls is a next gen game. You've got Ratchet and Clank and returnal and things like that and there's even upcoming games you know in the early part of 2022 on the playstation 5 uh but the xbox does have its own kind of exclusives you got starfield is coming uh, that should be pretty good uh probably elder scrolls 6 probably won't be around until maybe 2023 2024 maybe depends when starfield comes out uh microsoft do now own bethesda now so they've got all the bethesda games in their library uh, to come and again game pass really is probably the best feature of the xbox uh series consoles it is great to have game pass there it is great excellent value for money again jedi fallen order would have had to have bought this on the ps5 but it is available because again ea ea play games are available so i was able to download this through game pass uh, as well and it is excellent value for money uh, game pass there uh, so it is definitely worth your while uh, is it good value for money i think it is 400 and 450 at retail um you can get it for uh if you're lucky again just be patient and um, because eventually they'll come back into stock just sign up to one of those stock alert websites that's what i did bought this off of very.co.uk just paying it up over three months it's like 150 pounds a month so don't need to pay for it all in the one go so that's quite good so i managed to get lucky i had to wait in a big queue uh to get in there but yeah i think that the xbox series x is a pretty decent console one of the best the biggest advantages over the ps5 is the transition between generations is very seamless like you just sign in 
and even all your game saves, like the saves that we imported there from Borderlands and Fallout, they were the saves from the Xbox One version, and it just downloads the save from the cloud. And that's a good thing, Xbox Play Anywhere is another fantastic thing. With a game like Gears 5, for example, what you can do is, you know, you can play the game on your Xbox One, and then go play the game on your PC, and then go play your ga- play the game via xCloud on your phone, play it via your Series X. It's the same save file, and that save file is synced across all versions. It will just download the save file, which is pretty nice, actually. I think that's pretty good. And the, the upgrades, again, are seamless. It's not like the PlayStation 5. Games like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Ghost of Tsushima had issues when... Uh, you were when you were with the save files with the PS5 not recognized. You had to transfer the save files. So if you went back to the PS4 version, your save progress wouldn't continue over. Let's say you had you know a PS4 version. I just fell off the thing there. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, if you had the PS4 version, it won't sync across generations. Yeah, so it won't sync across generations or sync across platforms. Sorry, I had to edit that out there. Uh, Because someone decided to phone me there. That was a bit weird. Yeah, got to edit that out there. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, it's good that you get cross-platform, cross-generation save syncs. I think they're a really nice feature of the Xbox Series X uh, there. But yeah, I'm quite pleased with the Series X. I don't have regret like I did with the PS5. Maybe we'll regret it in a few months' time. But I guess Game Pass is just insanely good value there uh, i think um just for what you get for the money there right so in conclusion the series x is a decent console i mean it is again we said it's a greatest hits console not a lot of huge new experiences uh that you get across the you know across uh, on the ps5 but it does have some advantages over the ps5 so it is very difficult to predict and say which one is better uh, overall. Again, it's just going to come down to personal preference. Do you want that, you know, service from Microsoft? Do you want the games uh, as a service thing? If you want the Xbox Game Pass, if you just want to play more games, then yeah, it's uh, you know, then the Series X is probably the best, the better console to go for. If you want new experiences, then yeah, the PlayStation Five is probably the better choice for now uh in terms of you know everything they support mostly the same things most multi-plat games the performance difference generally isn't worth it you do you do have the 12 teraflops of gpu horsepower but it doesn't really translate into a real tangible gameplay difference i mean most games are fairly sort of normalized or equalized the games like control ultimate edition Again, they're both the same. They're pretty much the same settings, same feature set. Uh, so in terms of that, there's there's really just whatever pick one, pick whatever one you want. Really, uh, in terms of an upgrade on the Xbox One, it's a massive upgrade over the Xbox One. The Xbox One was kind of a mistake, really. It was Microsoft's worst console, I would say. I really didn't like the Xbox One. Uh, the Xbox One X, they kind of tried to redeem it. But it was too little, too late, really. Uh, I didn't really like the the Xbox One X. I was kind of disappointed with it. Um, It just lacked the, again, just the performance wasn't there. The resolution was there. Uh, The Series S is another option. But again, it gives you the performance, but not the resolution. It's not much of an upgrade over the One X. Uh, uh, You're better off going for the Series X there. Uh, So the only thing, the other thing I don't like is the proprietary ssd expansion the playstation 5 does let you use any gen 4 nvme drive and yeah both of these are expensive at the moment to upgrade uh but the difference between the playstation and the xbox is the playstation's drives because they're not proprietary and they're not just made by seagate because you can get them from multiple manufacturers the price will drop in that. The price is going to drop and you can have more than one terabyte capacity at the moment. You only get a choice between a terabyte and that's it. And prices are roughly about the same for the Microsoft one and the Gen 4 NVMEs. Gen 4 NVMEs, about £170 for a terabyte. Um, whereas it's about, what, £200 for the uh, the Microsoft proprietary 
SSD upgrades. Uh, but again, you know, you, you can archive your Xbox Series games. They can be archived on an external drive, at least. The PlayStation 5 recently got that patch. I don't know how recent that was on the the PS, on, on the Xbox. So I don't know whether you can do that from launch. Because I haven't owned the console from launch, uh, so we can't say. But it does give you the option to archive it. It will give you a warning uh, when you do that, when you uh, when you put in the uh, the export, when you, you know, if you try to move it, it'll say it's for archive purposes only. Uh, the user interface is more or less the same as the Xbox One, uh, but it does run a bit faster. Boot times are yeah faster, fast enough really. Um, again, it's not as fast as the PS5. You can't go from cold boot. Uh, we could go from cold boot to Spider-Man Miles Morales gameplay in under a minute. Um, games are a little bit slower, but it doesn't really affect it. It's, you're talking a few seconds uh, in terms of the difference between speed. Boot times are about the same uh, for the the Xbox uh, Series X and the PS5. Around 15 seconds to boot. Uh, really. It's a lot faster than the Xbox One X. I mean, the Xbox One X, you had to basically go out and hold the stone up and watch as it was eroded by the wind. That's how long the Xbox One X took. It took an insane amount of time to boot uh, there. But anyway, so we've ranted on long enough uh, about the Series X. What we'll do in the next video is we will take a look at the emulation capabilities of the Xbox Series X. It is a beast. Uh, that is one of its biggest party pieces. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, booting it into developer mode and we'll have a go with that at installing RetroArch and see if we can get some emulation on the go. It will surprise you just how good uh, the, the Series X is. But anyway, that is all for this video. So thank you for joining me. We'll see you again soon and goodbye.